Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Um, today is going to be kind of a, a different type of video. Um, it's, not, it's more going to be like a sort of a story time. I'm kind of going off script a little bit. Um, and today's video is it's going to be um, I'm going to be talking about my sort of first big mistake as an engineer. Um, so I was about a year and a half, maybe a year and a half to two years experience, um, still a grad, uh, but was kind of approaching the sort of project engineer type level. And um, I, I was work I had been working on this project for a while and I noticed the mistake when a lot of things had started to be built. Um, so the project was, it's a five story um, building, uh, ground up first it was concrete frame with a transfer slab at first floor and then four storeys of um, low bearing masonry. <clears throat> so as I was the grad, so I'd done all the calcs, um, my director had schemed it, I'd done all the calcs, put it all together, um, modelled and analysed the transfer slab in a software called Robot, structure analysis. Um, that was my first ever project using it, so I was pretty fresh uh, to um, finite, finite element analysis. Um, and using this particular piece of software and um, wasn't given that much guidance, was kind of left to run and learn by myself which is fine to an extent. The designs were kind of checked, like sense checked, but not the calcs were never thoroughly checked which is not necessarily my fault but I say the excuse at the time was we were really busy um, but that's really no excuse for things not being thoroughly checked, especially from um, a graduate with only sort of one to two years experience. Um, maybe I should have put on myself to make sure my things got checked. Um, but but anyway, <clears throat> so um, yeah, my, my my first mistake on this was, was going to site. Um, sorry, not going to site, but <clears throat> it was at construction stage. And so all the design had been done and they had complete cast the concrete for the transfer slab <clears throat> and um, you know when, when you're going on construction stage the you'll, you'll get um, what we call a request for information or RFIs and uh, so that's the site team asking you queries about the design can you do this can you do that you know something's got wrong um, anything any any question related to site you might get sent an email and you know, they'll request some information or some help or you need to go to site um, and so I can't remember the exact query, but I had to revisit my um, analysis model. And for whatever I was doing, I noticed that um, a portion of the slab, all my loads had disappeared. <laughs> so that was my superimposed super dead loads, like floor area loads, and my imposed loads. And if I had any sort of line loads on the edges, um, there was nothing. So all you know, if you were to run the analysis, the analysis was only giving me the stresses for the self-weight. And uh, I remember looking at it, I was like, what has gone on? Why why have the loads disappeared? And then um, and I tried to trace back um, different revisions of the models and it has gone on for a while that there have been no loads applied to this reasonably big portion of the slab. Um, from memory, this, this portion of the slab was um, the external terrace on the first floor. Um, so then I was like, crap, okay, well the analysis software is saying I haven't got any loads applied to it, so what did I base my designs on? What did I, what bending moments did I design the slab to? Did I manage to do it when the loads were applied or did I do it afterwards? And uh, it turns out I had designed it um, all my calcs were based off the bending moments from just purely the self weight and the fatted, fatted dead load. But um, yeah, no superimposed dead, no imposed loads applied. And I remember this was late on a day because um, that night I couldn't sleep. I really couldn't sleep. I was really, really worried. This was the biggest mistake at the time that I had done. And I hadn't told anyone. Um, I wanted to see if I could fix the mistake or you know, make sure it was okay, make sure there wasn't actually 
um, a big mistake um, that could cause any major damage or you know, health and safety issues or this thing was gonna, not going to fall down basically. I wanted to do my checks first before I felt I needed to tell anyone. So that night I really couldn't sleep. I really remember I really, really couldn't sleep. And um, remember the next day going into the office um, pretty early and I was just crunching the numbers on this. And um, I ended up managing to justify it because what I had done, I was, um, even though I hadn't applied any dead or live load, I had designed it as um, simply supported on its edges which meant I was technically not transferring any moment at the end supports and putting all the moment into the middle. Um, so what I ended up doing, I, I checked the reinforcement detailing um, and we had some decent sized bars in, but not enough to cover the, the moment of what it actually would be if I had applied all the right loads. Um, so what I ended up doing was um, redistributing moment from bottom and the middle of the span to the ends because the way that the slab had been detailed meant that a good portion of the moment could be redistributed to the supports. So that was my saving grace and I checked and rechecked all the numbers, all the bars and everything still worked. Um, you know, as it had been built, as per our drawings, it would work. So. I actually ended up not telling anyone, um, except maybe like half a year later when I told it to some friends and colleagues, um, kind of laugh about it now. But at the time, I um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't tell anyone. Um, but I, I didn't tell anyone because yeah, I had solved it essentially, um, managed to get around it. It worked, um, so I didn't tell anyone. And should I have told someone? Maybe if, if I couldn't if I couldn't make it work, or if it was really sketchy on how I made it work, um, then I definitely would have told my my senior or my manager. Um, but because I managed to make it work like pretty convincingly, um, I didn't feel the need to tell anyone. Um, so that was kind of my first, I would, I would say, major mistake. Even though you know the building didn't fall down, nothing really happened. I'd classify that as my first major, major mistake. And what you need to realize is everyone is going to make mistakes. Obviously, some people can make more serious mistakes. Um, I know colleagues who have made some really major, really major mistakes, mistakes that you should really never have made. But what you need to learn is you're going to make mistakes and the really good engineers are going to learn from these mistakes. I don't think I've ever made the same mistake of not checking my loads in an analytical model. It is this, this memory of my first mistake is so embedded in my head that I will always, always check loads. And you know, if I'm reviewing you know, other engineers' models, it's one of the first things I check is what are the loads you are proposing to apply? and then make sure that load is properly applied. <clears throat> so, I mean, these are just, um, you know, one of the things that you, you, you will learn is you will make a mistake, but how do you learn from these mistakes is also really crit critical. Um, what I did learn um, whilst doing this, because I, I mentioned before that I made it work by redistributing moments. Now, I didn't really know about redistributing moments at the time, but because I had made this mistake, it led me to do all this research on, on you know, moments and redistributing. So I actually came off, came off from this mistake, learning quite a lot about concrete design. So am I glad that I made a mistake? In hindsight, probably yes, but at the time I really was freaking out. And um, yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, I've got another example when I was um, basically nearly charted, which happened, um, but I'm going to save that for another video because that one was pretty big. Um, nothing fell down, but it could have been close if um, the site team hadn't picked it up and then I managed to come up with a solution. So anyway, um, thanks for listening and um, please like and subscribe. Cheers.